I can't imagine dressing up and doing the stuff I do at Ocean at any other club. <laughs> night in um, at Nottingham Trent. I've to experience it, that's all I can say. I don't know what my life would be without us. <laughs> is the best night of the week. Ocean Nightclub. Love it or hate it, Everyone's heard of it. For an outsider, this may just look like an old club, but for the students of Nottingham, it is so much more. It's only open two days a week, which are dedicated to both universities in the city. Wednesdays are for NTU and Fridays are for UON. Those who have heard of Ocean will also have heard of Andy the Ho, who owns the club. Since taking over in 2008, he has become somewhat known as a local celebrity and makes regular appearances at the club despite now living in Canada with his wife and children. My name is Andy. I am the owner of Ocean. Uh, it started here because I used to run the Friday that is here now, the uni night at um, Prism. Uh, and I moved it down here many years ago, 2003, I think it was, 21 years ago. So I moved the Friday here and then took over the club um, a few years later, about five years later, so in 2008. Even after all these years, Ocean remains a place to be on a Wednesday night, making tickets difficult to get hold of. People desperately want to go, and obviously we've got a certain capacity that we're allowed to sell to. Um, and once we get there, we can't sell any more. So it's, it's just a supply and demand thing. I think people get scared that they're not going to be able to get a ticket, so they buy one quicker, so then they sell out quicker, and it's just a, a, a knock-on effect, you know. Nottingham Trent student radio Fly Live hosts the Big O Show as another way for listeners to win free tickets. Hello everybody and it is that time of the week again. That is right, it is the Big O Show. And in this, this episode we are giving away three tickets to Ocean of your choice with your friends. So it is very sought after. Ocean is a very sought after club. Um, so the ticket process, which I'm obviously a great person to ask because I've been the social sex. So I was in charge in year one and year two of getting the tickets for Ocean. So um, at 11 a.m. on a Friday, you will get um, they release the Ocean ticket. So you need to be there on your laptop refreshing at 10.59 to make sure that you can get those tickets and you can get either a book of 10 tickets or a book of 20 tickets for your society. I think you have to have something like 100 members in your society to get the 20 tickets. Um, so we always used to aim high and get the 20 tickets so we could have as many people from the society um, going as possible. Um, so then we'd get the tickets in and sometimes I wouldn't be successful. It's hard. They go really quick. Once a ticket is secured, there's only one thing on everyone's mind, and that's costumes. From lifeguards to leprechauns, pirates to princesses, the possibilities are endless, and Ocean sees it all. And despite what some may think, the club have no input on what the theme is. Dressing up thing on a Wednesday has just always been a thing. Um, the Wednesday night's actually been here since before I started. It's uh, And the dressing up's just always been a thing. We've not sort of encouraged it, discouraged it. I, initially, I think it started where it was like a theme night and everyone used to dress the same and it's gradually morphed into the different societies and different teams and go, okay, this is our theme, that's their theme, that's the, and I, you know, on, on any given night, you'll have, you know, a bunch of police people over there and you'll have a bunch of convicts over here and, a, you know, somebody else over there and lifeguards over there and it's sort of a, a bit of everything. People, people still message me now and they'll say, what's the theme this week? And I'm kind of like, I've got no idea. You, you guys pick the themes, you know. You, uh, you decide what, you, what you're wearing and what you're coming as, and it's kind of anything goes. I literally have bikini tops and everything in here, just because. I don't know, like. <laughs> oh, we did a water oh, fight. Well. Well. Yeah, one of our plans is to do groom minions. Yes. Am I going to make Dressing up is definitely, like, the main part of it. I don't think it would be half as fun if you didn't dress up. Um, my favourite outfit is Collar Me. I think that's fair to say quite a lot of people's are, um, especially for dance, because like, 
for dancers. We get to dress up in like dance wear. Yeah, I feel like if you're from Notts, because we have a few members from dance that are from Nottingham, so obviously they know about Ocean. Um, but when we did like the Christmas markets were happening and we were walking through literally in like a mini skirt and like a top, we did get a few stares, but I feel like people are so used to it now because obviously Ocean has been running for so long that it's, we don't get that many weird looks. It's more just like when we cause havoc. The cheesy music of the night makes a club like no other and keeps the trench students coming back for more. I love it. Like, I love cheesy music. Like, give me Abba any time. I think it's so, that's another aspect. Like, it's so different. You don't get those silly songs, like the Baywatch song. You don't get that played in any other club. Um, I think that's probably what makes it so iconic, like you're not going to get that anywhere else. One of its most popular themes is Baywatch and the tradition of playing the show's theme song each week caught the attention from one famous lifeguard, the Hoff. I'm supposed to be in Ocean tonight, I can't make it, I'm really sorry. He was in town doing panto, um, so I got hold of him and told him about this place and obviously we've got the whole Baywatch thing goes off where we play the theme and everyone takes the tops off and swings them around the head. I said I'll, I'll email you. The video. So I emailed him some videos and he basically replied and said, I'm going to come down. So we didn't tell anyone he was coming. We just brought him in and again, we snuck him in and he actually went up on the balcony there and hid behind the screen. And we'd recorded a video of him saying he was sorry that he couldn't be here. He'd, he'd, he was in town, but he couldn't make it. And then sort of raised the screen up as he was, as the video was saying it. And he's behind the screen and everyone just went absolutely mental. I've never seen anything like it. It's the best sort of club experience. He's done a few of those kind of gigs where he's been to clubs. He said it was the best one he's ever done. Before the club even opens, ocean goers must tackle the iconic bar crawl. The first stop of the night is at pre-drinks. Popular NTU society, Trent Beer, start their bar crawl four hours before the club even opens. So normally we'll have a big pre's. There's normally about 80 of us or so at pre's and then we'll go to Route 1 around um, 7.15. Um, and then we'll go to Kooks at 8, um, Osbar at 8.45, uh, 9.30 we'll be at um, Icon, and then we will go to Beer Keller at 10.15, depending on whether you've got an Ocean ticket before like uh, 10.30 or 10.45 or whatever. So it basically all, all depends on that. But yeah, no, normally numbers do like drop off towards the end though. So you always have the stragglers that never make it or, or whatever, but yeah. No, it's good. For those still standing after conquering the bar crawl, it's time for the main event. The crown jewel of the night, it's ocean time. Tonight's a special night because Andy's in town and everyone wants a photo with the king of the ocean. And these starstruck students won't let him get away easily. Sometimes I sneak in and nobody sees me, but it's it kind of what, I'll come out of the office and somebody will stop me and I'll talk to them and they might say, oh, I'll come have a picture with this. So I'll, I'll stand and then somebody else sees that happening, so then, they come over and then somebody else, and it's kind of a, a knock-on effect. So it can take me like half an hour to walk like 100 yards or so, you know, because I get stopped every every few feet and talk to people and have pictures and things. So, but yeah, it's uh, I do find it strange, like I said. But I don't mind. I talk to I talk to everyone, you know. People loll all over me and hang off me for pictures, and you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's strange. And it's not just Andy that gets all the attention. Ocean has reached far beyond the city and become very popular on social media all over the country. People take to all different platforms to share their outfits, antics and outrageous rumours. Um, it's because we, we've never publicised or promoted the club to anywhere other than the two universities here. Uh, but now there's a lot of people like, you know, people at Trent that have got friends from home who know about Ocean before maybe they even, you know, their friend even came to Trent just because they've heard of it through, through TikTok or something. You know, which is good, but it makes a lot of, you know, a lot of people want to bring their friends from home because they've heard about it and, you know, want to come and see if the carpet really does have chlamydia. Can you confirm or deny does the carpet have chlamydia? <laughs> I can confirm it doesn't. It's, it actually relates back to a story when we had a, the carpet replaced um, a few years ago and we gave a piece of the carpet to the one of the universities and they tested it to see what was in it, just out of interest and write a story about it. It was really boring. It was just hair and cleaning fluid and skin and there were no diseases but it, that, that's kind of morphed into it was the fact was that we'd had the carpet tested to see what was in it and that's now morphed into the carpet was tested in it and it's got chlamydia over the years so I don't know maybe it has now I don't know we've not had it tested for a while
There is no denying that what Andy has created is the place to be in Nottingham and for students they will not find anything quite like it in the city. I've not changed the thing in the 16 years I've been in charge. I think if you changed this place, you'd ruin it. Um, because it is what it is and people know what it, what it is and what to expect. I've seen it before with places where they've spent an absolute fortune and, like you say, completely transformed it and it's ruined it. People have walked in and said, well, this isn't that place anymore. You know, and I think that's what would happen here. If we changed it, people would walk in and say, well, this isn't ocean anymore. You know, so now I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't change a thing. I want people to know that I'm still involved. You know, I'm not just sitting back there doing nothing. Um, and I enjoy it as well, you know. I, it's sort of, it's been a part of my life for 21 years now. I think it will go on until the building collapses <laughs> or gets knocked down, one of the two. There are those rumours that it's getting knocked down, but uh, nothing anytime soon. It's meant to have been getting knocked down for like the last 20 years, so we'll see. It's still here.